Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS test preparation videos. You will now see Elong from Indonesia score a band 7.5 for his performance on the interview. Afterwards, I will explain the good and the bad with detailed examples. For lots more help with your next exam, with over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, and original practice exams, get our premium package at aehelp.com. Use this discount code, also in the video description, to save 10%. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. Uh, what is your full name? My full name is Elang Dermawan, but you can call me Elang. Okay, Elang. May I see your identification, please? Yes, please. Um, this is my passport um, that I use to register for this exam. Okay, here's your passport. Pack. Thank you. For part one, I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling a little bit um, anxious uh, because I really want to get a good grade uh, for this exam. Otherwise, I'm feeling good. What do you plan to do after this exam? Um, after we've done with this exam, um, I'm planning to go to the beach with my friend. Let's talk about the weather. How often does it rain in your city? Um, it rains quite a lot in Jakarta. Um, it um, could be a hundred days in a year. Um, just like this past week, um, it rains uh, cats and dogs. What do you like to do when it's sunny? Um, as I mentioned before, um, I really like to go to the beach um, and hang out with my friend. So um, today I actually planning to go to Ancol Beach where, when it's sunny. How do you keep yourself cool on hot days? I usually try to stay um, in the shade as much as I can and also I I, I usually drink a lot of water. Um, usually, I always carry a bottle of water everywhere I go. If you could make the perfect weather, what would it be and why? <laughs> it's kind of a funny question, but if I could have a gut power like that, um, I would make the weather partly cloudy uh, and gentle breeze. Um, in that way, I could feel comfortable without getting sweaty and then blinded by the sun. Have you ever seen snow? And if yes, where? Yeah, I have. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to New York, New York uh, to visit my uncle and it was during December. And I saw snow for the very first time um, when I was there. Um, it was actually quite magical. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here is a uh, note, paper, pencil, and there's a card with some questions. Don't turn that over yet. Mm -hmm. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answer. Take notes if you wish in the one minute, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Okay. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Ilong, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay, um, so one object that uh, came into my mind when I saw these questions is a motorbike helmet. Um, it is a uh, headwear uh, plastic. Uh, it's black and red and it has visor to shut my eyes. Um, and also it has a chin strap to keep it in place. Um, I got it about two years ago in a motorbike shop close to my apartment and um, it's um, it's about 1.5 million rupiah um, which I got it at the same time uh, when I got my, my new motorbike. Um, every time um, I drive I always uh, wear it because it's actually mandatory according to Indonesian road rules to wear helmet and um, for for the motorists uh, who do not follow uh, the the rules, they will get uh, 
trouble like they get fined which i don't want to and however um the much more important uh reason for me to wear a motorbike helmet is because i want to protect my, myself and my health um a brain injury uh resulting trauma is no lovable matter um i actually read an article um saying that 80% of motorbike um saying that brain injury uh, caused by motorbike accidents can be prevented by wearing helmet and uh, in my opinion uh putting helmet is an at least uh at least a person can do uh, to ensure that they do not uh, injure themselves and also others um such an injury will not uh will be devastating not only for us but also for for the people who love us okay i'm going to stop you there um Ilang, please uh, pass back the uh, note paper the pencil thank you and now we will continue with uh part three for part three i will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two uh, let's talk about safety equipment. What are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? There are a lot of safety equipment that people use um, on a daily basis. Uh, for example, uh, the motorbike helmet that I just mentioned before. Other than that, um, uh, safety glasses and boots uh, commonly used in the construction site um, in the office or environment. Um, also, uh, nowadays you see a lot of people wearing face mask and then gloves uh, to prevent them, you know, to get infected by the virus. Which of these is used more than any other? Um, I'm not quite sure, but um, I think a car seat belt uh, are the, the, the common um, safety gear equipment that people use all around the world. Which types of problems can occur if people don't use certain types of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Um, when people are responsible and do not wear a safety equipment, for example, a car seat belt when they are driving, they may get seriously injured, um, such as a broken bone, um, severe burn, or even died. How does this affect society? Um, it has a horrible effect um, to a lot of people. Um, for example, um, you know, it can cause a, not only financially but also emotionally damage. Um, you know, uh, taking care of um, injured people costs you a lot of money. And then also the most important thing is the feeling of sorrow that um, it may cause to the people who love us. How has technology improved safety equipment? Um, it improved a lot. For example, um, um, it made, uh, they, they made them even more stronger and then also lighter and more, much more effective. Can you give an example? Yeah. Um, um, for example, a car, uh, sorry, an airbag. Um, system uh, it helps uh, to reduce the uh, the impact when the accident happens to the driver and also my helmet it has Kevlar which is a, um, a plastic but it's uh, it's uh, lighter stronger um, compared to any other you know conventional conventional plastic let's talk about acting responsibly what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? Um, when, when, uh, when, when people plan to do some kind of, you know, risky activity like a uh, hiking, for example, they should do uh, a lot of research about uh, the place they are going, um, so that uh, they can uh, plan and better know, you know, uh, about the area and then any kind of, uh, you know. Um, um, situation that may happen uh, and also to check their safety gear equipment just in case why is this important to do it is very important because when uh, when the adventure seekers uh, 
do these preemptive measures, uh, they can uh, prepare for any kind of situations uh, to maximize the safety. And in case of uh, you know um, accidents, uh, it minim it minimize the harm. People often say that we are responsible for each other, not just ourselves. Why is this? And do you agree with this statement? Um, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, humans are social creatures. We live in a group and, you know, uh, one uh, actions uh, can also impact others or society. For example, so when people are driving not carefully, uh, they can uh, they can cause, uh, um, you know, uh, trouble not only for themselves but also for others. And um, as I mentioned before, um, when when people get a brain injury, they, they they cannot rely on themselves. They they need others to taking care of them. How can society encourage responsible behavior? Um, I believe that uh, authorities and the government should work together to create, you know, some kind of campaign, um, you know, showing how uh, people exercise wearing a helmet or any kind of safety gear equipment before they're driving, instead of showing, uh, you know, people smoke in, in, in TV or any other media. That is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark in about two weeks' time with the other sections, Elon. Uh, remember to take your passport with you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Elon gets a band 7.5 for his speaking interview because he is somewhere between a good and a very good user of the English language. He is clearly above a 6. 6 is simply someone who is fluent. A good user is someone who has a wide range of vocabulary, can give good answers and explanations as well as examples. A very good user is someone who makes fewer mistakes, who is even more coherent, and has to think less about their answers. Let me give you some detailed explanations and examples using Elong's responses. Firstly, Elon uses a wide range of vocabulary. This means that he is able to often paraphrase the words in the questions and also come up with some good collocations and good idiomatic language. In part one, to express the idea that there is heavy rain in Jakarta, he uses the idiomatic expression, it was raining cats and dogs. Furthermore, he uses quite a few collocations in the different parts of the speaking interview. He uses collocations like social creatures, preemptive measures, and safety gear accurately. However, at times, Elong is stuck searching for the right word. This is noticeable when he uses the phrase, you know, especially in part three where the questions get more difficult. You hear him say the phrase, you know, several times. This isn't just simply a part of his diction, but it's a way that he stalls for time in order to come up with the right vocabulary. This shows that even though Elong has good vocabulary, he's not able to access it as quickly as a higher level speaker. It is bad to use the pronoun you in your IELTS speaking interview. This is because you do not want to speak directly to your examiner. It's common for people in everyday language to say you, like you should do this, or when you go downtown, when you watch this movie, even when we're not actually talking about that person. However, using you incorrectly in context leads to bad communication. A lot of students do this, but you must make sure that you avoid using you in your IELTS speaking interview. Again, Elon does this a couple of times and it does lead to awkward communication. For example, in part three, he says, taking care of injured people will cost you a lot of money. Well, in this case, I'm not really the one taking care of injured people. It's society or it's the people close to those who get injured. So it's awkward and incorrect to say this.
When you're doing your practice, pay a special attention to this kind of pronoun mistake. Don't use you. Avoid it in your interview. So you have to be careful to use a more accurate noun than you. One strategy which Elon uses that is very good in the speaking interview is to use quantitative language. This means using numbers to give clarity and coherence as well as to build fluency. In part one, when he explains how much it rains in Jakarta, he says, well, it rains about at least a hundred days in a year. When he talks about his motorbike helmet, he explains how many rupiah it cost him. This is really good to do in your speaking interview. Make sure to practice quantitative language before you sit your exam. Another good point for Elong is that he does use a broad range of grammar throughout the interview. However, one of the bads is that he doesn't always reflect the grammar of the question. Some questions are asking in the continuous form of the verb, while others are using present perfect, like this example here. How has technology improved safety equipment? In this case, Elong does not use the present perfect in his response. He simply says, it improved a lot. Instead, he should say, it has improved a lot. Technology has made safety equipment safer and stronger. You can definitely bump up your score by reflecting the grammar of the question. Pay a special attention to the past and present perfect forms. Elong does give a couple of bad or awkward responses where his grammar is off and it makes it a bit tricky to understand exactly what he is intending to say. Grammar mistakes can really cost you because they lower both your grammar range and coherency scores. For instance, when Elong is talking about what happens when people don't wear helmets in Indonesia, he says, this will get trouble. Instead of saying, this will get a person into trouble. Also, when he's describing the helmet, which is good, he says, the helmet has a visor to shut my eyes. In this case, he's using the wrong word. Instead of shut, he should be saying to protect my eyes. These kinds of word choice mistakes and grammatical mistakes definitely affect scores negatively. The big bad in Elong's interview happens in part two where he becomes extremely nervous. You have to control your anxiety. You can tell that when Elong becomes nervous in part two, his fluency decreases as well as his coherence. When you start to feel anxious during your IELTS interview, take a deep breath, focus yourself. Remember that the sun will shine tomorrow. You're there to do your best and you can't ask more of yourself. Try to visualize and imagine that the examiner is your grandpa or your grandma smiling at you. Feel comfortable with them. Remember, you're likely not going to be the best candidate or the worst candidate on that day. Just do what you can and keep calm. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. To get many more video lessons like this one, as well as a fully interactive course and original practice exams, visit and get our premium package at aehelp.com. Use this discount code to save 10%, also in the video description. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.